Hi there, this is uh, Dave King DDS. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start going through some of these really basic CEREC introduction videos for some dental assistant training. Um, this isn't necessarily only for dental assistants, but also applies to anybody who's trying to familiarize themselves with this great software. Um, this is software version 4.3. As you can see, I've opened the software up and we have um, the main landing page here. A um, couple of things I'm going to point out on this main screen. Um, you can see it's not maximized. You can see the top bar and you can see the bottom bar down here. Um, what I'm going to do is demonstrate. You can actually shrink this just a little bit, drag it around the screen if you want to, or what I like to do is maximize it. So it fills the whole window of the CEREC machine. It looks a little cleaner. You can access your uh, um, information bar up on the top. Anyway, let's talk through um, setting up a patient. Now we'll go through some parameter settings in another video, but let's talk through just getting the program set up, started, um, up to the uh, imaging point. So from this screen, I'm going to go ahead and add a new patient. Now if we had a patient who had already been seen in the office, you can certainly start typing their name in here and search for it there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add a new patient. So last name, I'm just going to put in myself. Um, first name, David. Um, date of birth, let's just put in today's date just for fun. Twenty-five two zero one seven, and then the dentist. Um, what I like to do is I like to put in the last name of the dentist, comma the first initial. That's pretty clear. Um, whatever you whatever you do, you want to get on the same page with everybody in the practice, so you don't have twenty-five different Dr. Kings listed in the in the software. At some point, I hope that Sarek will allow us to go ahead and. Um, put in a list of providers and then just click the provider rather than adding a bunch of different providers with each patient. So here we are. I've got the patient name, provider name, date of birth. Ideally that would be the patient's date of birth. And I'm going to add a case. So let's talk about this screen right here. This is the main screen for you to set up your case. Now looking over here on the left side, we've got a single restoration, we've got a bridge restoration, and we've got an abutment. So three choices, single, multiple, or abutment. Um, with this version of the software, I can't do a bridge on abutments yet, um, but we could get around that if we wanted to. That's a little bit further down the line as far as the training is concerned, so I wouldn't worry about it at this stage. Let's talk about setting up a single posterior crown or anterior crown first. So you can see these teeth are all ghosted out since I haven't selected one of the indications. So I'm going to click on single crown, single restoration. And then you see we have four choices that come up. Um, before we do anything, I'm going to jump down to this missing um, option. You'll notice when I go to the bridge, it's still there. Um, but we have to be very careful. This is a tooth that has been extracted or is missing from the arch, not because it was extracted. Um, not because it, it was taken out and we're replacing it, but because it was you know, taken out for orthodontic reasons. It's a tooth that it does not exist in the mouth um, because it was removed and the space was closed. So for instance, if, if we had a tooth um, number four that had been extracted for orthodontic reasons and then three and five had been closed, um, then we could click missing and select tooth number four. Um, anyway, so that being said, I would leave this alone. I've only used this once in 10 years. Ignore this missing button. So we're going to start with the crown. Very simple. Click on the crown. Then what's our design mode? I generally like to use biogeneric copy about 90% of the time, um, if I can. Now this is all assuming that the uh, restoration, or I'm sorry, the tooth surface is intact. Now if you've got a big broken tooth or you've got a giant filling that's really, really flat, um, a lot of times I'll go ahead and use the biogeneric individual option. But biocopy basically gives you a replication of what the tooth was beforehand. Um, so let's, let's talk about biogeneric individual. This particular setting is designed to look at the teeth next to um, the tooth that you're, you're fixing, you're restoring, and give you uh, an occlusal anatomy that basically matches what the adjacent teeth have. 
<clears throat> a lot of people go to this um, with 4.4 software, which this computer is running right now. This biogeneric individual is a great, great option from the standpoint of giving you really nice proposals, really great. They've done a lot of good. Um, some of the earlier versions were a little wonky, very, very template-like. With bio-individual, it really matches the anatomy really, really well. So by generic copy, um, you would have to copy or take a pre-preparation image in a separate file folder in order to use this. And what's this biogeneric reference? Well, this would be where we would uh, want, like if we were doing tooth number 8 and we wanted to replicate in a mirror um, what tooth number 9 looks like, or 7 and 10, or something like that, or 12 and 13 adjacent teeth. Um, this is where you have a tooth that's, that's pretty perfect and you want the computer to use it when it's considering the design. Um, I don't use this much. I used to use it a lot, but I don't use it much now that the biogeneric individual is uh, so powerful. So let's, for the sake of our purposes today, we're going to talk about this biogeneric individual option. Click on that. And now we have our materials choices that come up. Now these are our, our defaults or our favorites, which you can change in your settings. Um, but I like to go to Emacs. Um, haven't used a lot of multis lately or Mark IIs. Um, you can also get there by going here. If these favorites don't show up, you can click on the manufacturer, and you see this is IPS, this is Ivaclar, um, and then I could select Emacs either here, or I could select it, um, I guess since it's up here, it's not showing in this list. So I'm going to select Emacs right there. Now if I decide, oops, I've messed up, you just click on this right here, go back and change the material, whatever it is. I'm going to put that back on Emacs. Um, and then we select the teeth. So let's just say we're doing a crown on tooth number three. I'm going to select three. I just clicked on it once. Now look over here. We've now got this individual little file for this case, tooth number three. All right. Now let's say I wanted to use something different for tooth number four. Well, if I was going to do a crown on number four, I'd leave the settings the same. Um, for crown by a generic individual, but I could change this now to let's say I wanted to use a Mark II or an Empress or a Sierra Smart or whatever you you want to use. Let's just say I wanted to use a Celtra Duo, um, which is Dent Supply, um, and then select tooth number four. Now you can see we have tooth number three, which is a crown by a generic individual using Emacs. Tooth number four, which is a crown by a generic individual, which is Celtra Duo. So you can see two different choices here. Now, what if I realize, oh, I messed up. This one should be Celtra Duo also. So I can click on that tooth. Then I need to click on this edit, this little pencil right here. Click on this edit. Um, and then I can go in here and change any of the settings. Let's see, I want to get to Celtra Duo. That's a dense supply product. Celtra Duo automatically populates there. There's no other option there. Or if I wanted to go to GC, Sierra Smart, there it automatically populates or Ivaclar, Empress, CAD, or Empress Multi, whatever you want to do there. Bunch of choices here. So um, once you're done editing that, hit Apply, and then it gets you back to this screen right here um, where we can move forward if you want to. Now what if we did, you know, we start the case and the patient comes in and, and the assistant's already got everything set up. The patient says, ah, I only want to do one crown a day. Let's do the worst one. You talk to the doctor. The doctor says, okay, we're going to do number three. So we need to delete number four now. Same thing. Click on tooth number four. Use your trash can. Delete. Now if they change their mind again, it's easy enough to add back in there. You have all these selected already. Just go through and check it. Click. There it is back again, but realize again that it's going to be populating the type of material from your choices over here. So let's just say this is correct. This is exactly what we want to use, an Emacs on number three and a Celtra on number four. And once we've double checked to make sure that our case is correct, we're going to hit the next step and go to acquisition. Pretty simple stuff for a single crown. Um, now, one other thing I'll mention to you, if I get to this screen and I realize I've made a mistake, it's easy to go back. You can either use the double arrow right here to go back, or I can go back up here and click Administration and go back to the screen I was just on. Go in and edit just like I mentioned. No problem, no sweat. So let's talk just a little bit about the bridge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete these so we can get a fresh case. So let's say we're going to be doing a bridge. 
Um, I know a lot of docs out there don't, don't do bridges with Emacs, whether they're not comfortable with the material or the process or the time, or they just prefer to have a lab do it. Um, it's really pretty simple. Two things you need to remember. Never use this missing unless, like I said before, you have a tooth that has been extracted for orthodontic reasons and the tooth has been, um, the space has been closed. That's what this is designed for. Don't use that unless you have that one circumstance. Otherwise, it'll confuse you. Um, so let's talk about uh, the bridge. We're going to select the crowns. Now, these are the abutments or the retainers for the bridge. So let's just say we have tooth number four that is missing. We're not going to click that, but number four is missing in the patient's mouth. Um, we want abutments on three and five, so I'm going to select tooth number three, select tooth number five, and then the pontic, the suspended tooth, is number four. All right, now you can see a link, link. You've now got your connectors right there, and the computer gives you the green arrow, or the, the arrows active so you can move forward. Now, let's, let me show you what would happen if you were to do this. So let's do the abutments again, three and five. And if I were to say, okay, tooth number four is missing. All right, now it's missing. So how do I get a pontic on there? Now I can't select a pontic. There's no way to do that, right? So now we have these two teeth. The computer's gonna design connected. Um, which would, will be big problems for you. So don't use this missing um, when you're designing a bridge. It just throws everything off. All right, so let's delete that. We'll go back to what we were at before. Bridge, we're going to do the abutments. I'm going to unselect this as missing. Yes, I know I'm going to delete that. Come on now. Not missing. We're going to design that as a pontic. Looks like we've found one of the glitches in this software version. All right, let's see if I can get past this real fast. There we go. Now it gave me the, the proposal after I told it the Pontic and the Biogeneric Individual and what I was using to make it. And then the crowns right here and right here. Okay, so that's a real basic introduction to crown setup and bridge setup in the software. Hopefully it didn't get too confusing. Um, I will continue to add videos of this basic explanation process for dental assistants or basic intro for doctors or whoever. Please feel free to message me if you have any questions or want any specific videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.